Hey guys, my name is Mannequin and welcome back to Mastering EDM with FL Studio. So, uh, the, we covered a little bit last video, but not too much. We'll try to keep the pace slow here so we can kind of uh, uh, get, just get a little bit of time to kind of think over things and experiment around. Hopefully you did actually pop open FL Studio if you have it and uh, get a chance to mess around and try some uh, working with patterns and stuff here just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Uh, if you didn't, I really suggest you do because it's a lot easier to learn uh, audio production when you actually do practice and uh, try things between videos because that's really where all your learning is going to be. If you just watch all the videos, unfortunately, I can't say that you'll be very good. You have to actually try the stuff in between. So uh, if you haven't tried that already and you have the software, my suggestion is go there and check, uh, check out the software. Just get used to clicking around in it and uh, adding and removing stuff and kind of making patterns and listening to them. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Um, the, so today we're going to be talking about the playlist. The playlist is where we take our patterns and start to sort them. So we can do a whole bunch of funky things with them and uh, kind of put them in weird places and however we want. But essentially just think of it this way. This is where our song is going to be laid out and we can put anything anywhere and it'll play it. So, uh, so what we're going to do here is we have this pattern here and the easiest way to start moving stuff in is just by brushing it in. So if you see my pointer is shaped like a brush, if yours is not click the brush icon there and you'll get the brush pointer. And what you should be able to do is just click and drag with your left mouse button. And for some reason it's set to pattern two. That makes no sense. Uh, we'll set it back to this one here. So if we go pattern one, bingo. So that sets our brush to the, uh, the pattern we had before. So that's what we're going to work with. Okay, cool. So we'll try this again. Brush this across here. And we have our pattern one is just looped here. So uh, you'll notice right now this is lit up. That means we are in pattern mode. So if I play this right now, it just plays whatever the heck is in here. So uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to uh, you want to keep it that way and just kind of make stuff in there, but you'd be pretty restricted to what you could actually do. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch us into song mode now. What that does, if you notice, a little green triangle appears right here. Doesn't look like a playhead, but it is a playhead. You'll see when it starts to move out here. So uh, we have this little triangle right here, and that means we're going to start playing this area instead of this area. So to keep this in mind, if you see right here, it says song slash pattern mode. And if it's activated, we are in pattern mode and we can play this here and that little playhead disappears. And if we turn this off, then we're back into song mode. And we can play the whole song. So I'm going to play this here, clicking play. And you can see that it just plays this entire area and it doesn't really care how long this is. Uh, it just kind of starts to uh, play whatever is right here. So uh, so the next thing we could do is we actually start changing things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the kick drum and the ride. So these are just kind of like hats and uh, snares and claps. So if we play this back in the loop mode. Sweet. So um, now one thing to keep in mind is when we change this, it is linked directly to this. They are the same thing, they're the same pattern. So if I get rid of something here and I switch it to song mode, it's also going to get rid of it there. So that's something you really need to keep in mind. Uh, there's a, there's, there's, you know, you might be used to, you know, removing something from here and that stays, and then you just add the new one in. And, uh, but unfortunately that's not the way that FL studio works. If you like that method of doing things, then what you might want to do is you might want to move over to Ableton or logic. Uh, logic is Mac only. Um, but that one does have a different, uh, workflow for those of you. Uh, that have Macs. Uh, but if you are stuck on Windows, then uh, my other suggestion is using either Cubase or Ableton. If you like to have things to where you could kind of uh, just go in, change one note here and leave the rest the same, that's what Ableton and, um, and Cubase tend to do. So uh, FL Studio, on the other hand, we work in patterns. So uh, we have this pattern here, we've changed it and that's dropped there. Now what we're going to do is go to our pattern selection. And we can select different patterns that'll line up down here, but right now we only have one. So what we'll do is we'll insert a new pattern. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have a new button, which is kind of confusing, but what we do is we just hit insert one and it'll give us a new pattern. So we're gonna name this one uh, kick. And what we'll do with this one is just put a kick drum into it. Notice it cleared it and you can't see any of the other things here now. It's just the kick drum. So this is where things start to get a little bit complicated and you kind of need to make sure that you make the connection. 
So if I have this in pattern mode, it'll be playing whatever pattern I have selected. You kind of see here, the kick one is a little bit more bold. If you look right there, it's more bold than the other pattern, pattern two. So what we're gonna do is um, we, we know that we have that one selected because it's bold. And um, what we could do is play this here and it plays the bold pattern, which is just our kick drum. But if I switch over to playlist mode and I play this, it's whatever we've dropped in here. We've only dropped in pattern two right here. So we're playing two different things here, uh, but that's not to say that that's all we have in the project. So, um, so now that we have this pattern here, uh, you'll notice that our little brush automatically swapped to kick. That's the way things usually work with FL Studio. Um, so now we have the kick and we can actually drop it in using our brush again. So we'll paint this over here, boom. And now we have our kick drum as well. So we have our kick drum and our pattern. And if we play it in song mode, like you can see we're in right now because of the, play, the playhead, it's playing both. So it's playing the kick drum right here. And then I'm gonna switch it to pattern by clicking on this pattern. And it's playing that. So when you play them both at the same time, what you get is this. Sweet. So that's pretty much uh, the, the premise of the uh, the playlist here. You just get various patterns and drop them in however you want. So there's a few other things we could do with patterns though. That'll make your life a little bit more um, easier to manage. Uh, so you notice that we do have uh, pattern two up here. You can barely read the name. If I stretch it out, you kind of see. Uh, and then we have kick. Well, uh, they're basically, they look very similar. So how do you keep from getting mixed up? There's a couple ways to do it. I'll show you the first option. You could color individual patterns. So if we go to our kick, uh, we have that selected and then we go to rename then we could actually change the color as well. So we're going to make this red because the kick is always red. Actually, that's not true. But uh, so now you'll see here, we change the color of the pattern and it's linked. It automatically changes the color of every single instance of kick that we have. So whenever we put a new one in, it'll have that color. And I am holding down the right mouse button to delete things. So uh, that's the way, like I said in the previous video, that's the way FL Studio always works. Click to add and uh, right click to delete. That's the way it's always gonna be. So um, now we have uh, the, our little slight form of organization. We're gonna do one other thing here. We're gonna say, uh, we know this is our kick drum because it's red. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename the track right here to uh, other drums, sweet. So you'll notice here that it changed that to other drums. So you kind of see that uh, this is where we're gonna put our other drums. So if we have, um, you know, maybe let's say we wanna change uh, we'll change this one. This is actually a good way to kind of introduce you to making songs. So we'll get rid of all those uh, at the end of each section here. And we will get a, uh, we take this pattern and instead of adding a new pattern, we're gonna actually clone this one. So it'll give us a second one here. And this one's gonna be named pattern three. We'll rename this so it makes more sense. So I'll name it fill. Uh, we'll go back to the other pattern and we're gonna rename this so it makes more sense as well. And we'll put this, um, uh, uh, hat and snare, um, just because. It is actually a clap, but it's no big deal. So it's a clap and a snare. So we have these two things, and um, you'll notice if I, uh, you can see right here, if I expand this out, it says hat and snare. So this is hat and snare right here. And uh, if I go to right here and click fill, I can actually start dropping in some fills there. And these are the same. So if I swap between them, you can see it's the exact same thing because this isn't changing. If I swap to the kick, you see it changed. So it is different, but these are the same, but they're actually two different slots. So now I'm gonna change fill uh, and make it go, uh, like that, we'll do that. So it'll sound kind of like this when we play it in song mode. And we could do, uh, actually we could do this instead. Yeah, that might be what I was looking for. There we go. Uh, so it just kind of gives it, you know, a little bit slightly different sound. If we go into pattern mode and we just kind of compare them, we have this one. Yep. 
So there's not much of a difference, but that kind of shows you how you can have flexibility, but still have organization. So we have our uh, main thing that we have going here, and then we just have our fill uh, at the end of every, uh, so we have one, two, three, and it's the fourth one at the end there. So, uh, so that's kind of just shows you how you organize things. And once again, we could do things like, uh, uh, we'll do pattern insert, and then we're going to make a ride. And what we'll do is we'll actually have the ride go here, 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 here. And just like, uh, oh, that's actually the kick. Whoops. Uh, ride here, 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 and here. Bingo. And we're not going to have it come in until here. We'll just drop right there, and then we're actually going to get rid of that, and then get rid of that. So this will sound kind of like this. Uh, switch it over to song mode, and then I can hit spacebar to play this. So you kind of see how we can start to organize things to really make a song. So uh, with that, we're pretty much going to be wrapping this up here. There's one other thing I want to talk about. Um, you can actually, uh, just two other things we'll say here. You can actually rename and uh, color these tracks as well. So I did show you how to rename, but you could color these as well. If you want to just like make your entire track always be a certain color. Uh, so we'll just make this yellow, for example, and hit enter. And then you kind of see this track shows the color shows up here where you could change the color up at the top instead. So we'll kind of make our fill stand out a bit more and we'll go to color the fill here and then set it to, uh, I don't know, how about blue? Yeah, we'll just set it to a blue color. There we go. And then what happens is you can see most of our stuff there is, uh, is gray, but then it swaps over to blue just to kind of show us this is where we have our fill. So, um, so that's, uh, that's just one way you kind of color code things just to get a better idea. Or once again, you can, uh, organize things. So, uh, you could kind of just move things around and uh, place them in a way that kind of makes sense to you. So we could put these over here and it wouldn't make any difference in sound. It just kind of, you know, be however we want it. So that's pretty much it. Just remember, keep your things organized because uh, FL Studio is one of those things. It's loop based, so it's very easy to get things mixed up. So if you keep things organized from the very beginning, then um, it'll make a lot more sense later on when your projects get bigger and bigger. Uh, when they're small at first, it doesn't really matter that much, but you should get used to uh, sorting things out so that you're in the habit. Uh, because if you wait until when you get bigger productions to do that, then it's not gonna be a habit and you're gonna be digging through all your stuff trying to figure out how the heck to do things. So uh, once again, you know, just uh, just kind of remember, we do have each thing, everything linked here. So when I click something here, it swaps the pattern here. It swaps whatever my brush is drawing, which is uh, that's that kind of tells us what our brush is drawing specifically. So we can disconnect them and change them. Uh, but for the most part, whenever we click each one of these loops, we're swapping the loop, and it's exactly the same as if we are swapping the loop up here. So uh, we can go to our various sections, change the stuff inside of them, and then paint them around however we want. So um, anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. One final thing, like I said, there were two things I wanted to cover. The first one was the renaming with the color. And the other thing was how to actually save these as audio files. So uh, we'll wrap this up pretty quick here. All we have to do is go to export MP3 file. And then I'll just go to draft bounces here, mastering DraftL Studio example. Yeah, we'll do that. Replace that there. And what we're gonna do is make sure the mode is in full song and then we'll just uh, make sure that the tail is set to leave remainder. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna play from the very beginning all the way up to wherever your last loop is. So where, where, where your last loop ends is where it's gonna play. So if your last loop happens to be over here, then it'll play all the way over to the end, even if there's a big space right here. So it'll, it just won't play anything for that whole time. So um, now that we've got uh, this prepped up here, we have full song, leave remainder, and um, then all we have to do is click start. Mm, boom, and it's done saving. So uh, now I can actually go over to my files and I believe I actually have this somewhere, if I could find this. Um, okay, so go to music and uh, FL projects, where is that? There we go. And then we'll just go to draft bounces and it's right here. So, um, so if I play this back, you kind of see it's the exact same thing.
we go. So it just kind of shows you uh, how to save something as a song that you could give to everybody else and show them your beats. So uh, hopefully you get a chance to mess around with these and have fun. Uh, but uh, really, practice is key to getting better at all this. So uh, uh, hopefully you do get the chance to hop into FL Studio before the next time I release a video here. Um, just because you do need to make sure that you're uh, you're getting used to how all this works. Because uh, if you st only start when I get to like the uh, seventh video or something, you may be a little bit left behind in terms of uh, when you actually hop in to do stuff, you might be kind of like, oh, that's right. I don't remember exactly how to do this. I don't remember how to use all this stuff. So if you start now and you actually just use these basic things, then uh, before you go on to the next video, then you'll get an idea of how it works. So just wanted to say thank you guys so much for uh, giving, giving all the support on the previous video and telling me that yes, you guys do definitely want more of this series. So uh, I'm going to continue this, but once again, it is going to depend how far I continue it is going to depend on how much support there is because uh, there are a good handful of people that want me to do this. So I'm going to keep updating it for sure. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, it may end at a shorter series rather than a extremely long series like my Mastering EDM with Logic Pro series. So anyway, uh, with that in mind, uh, please continue to leave likes. I know if the series ends up dying off and people are kind of, you know, uh, leaving it after a certain amount of time. So please leave likes to let me know if you guys, uh, as much as you guys want me to continue this. Um, so, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, leave them down below and I'll see you in the next video.